This meeting is called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law. This meeting is September 23, 2024, which is included in the list of meetings notice sent to the 120 Democrat Career News. In January 3, 2024, posted on the Bulletin Board for a Hall on the date, and has remained continuously posted as required. In addition, a copy of this notice is and has been available to the public and is on file in the office of the Borough Clerk. Can I have a roll call, please? Councilwoman Engelhardt? Here. Councilwoman Passard? Here. Councilman Levitt? Here. Council President Olin? Here. Councilman Parker? Here. Council Vice President Rosetti? She's absent. And Mayor Harrell? I'm here. Um, before we do uh, the presentation by Lisa Hibb uh, that's on the agenda, we are joined um, by the uh, Director of the Board of uh, County Commissioners, Jeff Poole. Um, I told you all two weeks ago that the freehold commissioners had awarded us. Sorry, I'll never be able to say that just without. Um, well, you know, awarded us $40,000 to be used towards the HVAC system at the new police building. And um, the commissioner director personally brought the check to us today. So, um, you want to say a couple words? Sure. So, uh, Thank you everyone for having me tonight. The uh, so the our county reorg, uh, I brought up that we were going to have two million dollar infrastructure grants for 100 county municipalities, um, and this is the well one's an infrastructure grant, one is for parks and recreation, which is is coming up. Um, so uh, naturally, all 26 municipalities uh, participated, and the you know the ask was for probably three times as much as a million dollars, but um, so we had a, a independent organization go through all the applications and help everyone through the application process. Um, so we weren't picking the winners and losers. So it was all, everybody can be happy. Hopefully nobody's gonna complain. But uh, anyway, so uh, Flemington, we are awarding you with a check of $40,000 towards your police station upgrades. And uh, we hope that uh, Everything goes well for you and look forward to the completion of the police station and the completion of the uh, project here in Flemington to make Flemington back to what it used to be. And uh, so here I will. It's a check to the mayor. Thank you very much. We really appreciate it. The um, the second round, the second million, okay. the Parks and Recreation Grant for, yes. which could be used for. So it could be used for, you know, uh, park equipment, uh, park upgrades, uh, you know, would say your trails need to be redone, different things like that, or even, uh, you know, if you had towards the purchase of some park area or whatever. So, um, the the application process that'll also that'll have the, the uh, you know, individual things that you need to comply to, just like any other grant process. And uh, um, you know, we're assuming that we're going to get all twenty six municipalities again, and we're going to. Uh, do this, but we're we're so happy that we the county at this point we have uh, the clout and and the ability to do this. Uh, one of my things beginning of this year when I became director is we're all one big community in Southern County. And we want to acknowledge that and we want to help all these towns because I, I I was a mayor for our township twice and you know I know how it is you're stretching every penny. So uh, you know, we're glad we can help, and um, you know, I'm sure we'll be helping you again with the, the park situation. I know that and the the park applications are, it's now an active application. I think it's yeah. used sometime in October, maybe the end of October, so. Well, I'm not um, sure of the actual dates, but I know it it's is out. Soon. It's soon. It comes it pretty fast. You should have all, all, everybody should have uh, received the application, and if there's any questions, you know, feel free to, uh, you know, feel free to reach out to the county staff and uh, get clarification. Well, this is appreciated. I just want to make sure it's made up to the borough, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sadly. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Thank you, Thank, you sure. Thank you so Thank you. much. Really yeah, appreciate you. it. Sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have a great night. Thank you, too. All right. Uh, so um, number five on the agenda is a presentation by Lisa Hibb, who's the Vice President of Operation and Governance Relationships. 
government relations, commercial utility consultant. A um, couple of weeks ago, I asked all of you, you know, we were all kind of blindsided by uh, this whole energy opt-in, opt-out thing, and uh, nobody up here remembered anything about it from before I got elected. So um, uh, Brian McNally and I, in Carlos' absence, we did a lot of a lot of research, and what we found was that in 2019, um, actually Councilman Runyon uh, brought this to the council's agenda and attention, and uh, did a presentation on this countywide um, program, which is not from the freeholders. I mean, they now look like the county was doing this, but they really aren't doing this. So there was an ordinance drafted and passed unanimously by the council, um, of only one of whom survives from that council uh, to my left. Mm -hmm. And it was, you know, how many years ago was that? 2019, was over five years ago, five and a half years ago. 2020 was your ordinance, the end of 2020. So it's no, that was a, it was 2019 when I was. I have December 14th, 2020 on the um, ordinance itself. You do? Okay, I thought Chris were it was twenty nine. Yeah, ordinance number. Yes, I do. Twenty twenty dash twenty dash twenty. What oh, you're right. It was twenty twenty. Yeah. Um. See, that's how much I've read, I've studied this because I know the ordinance number. Anyway, the ordinance gave the mayor, which I had never seen before in my thirty years in government, authorized the mayor to always have the power to sign this a contract with this company. But then a week later, they introduced a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign the contract. Mm -hmm. But the ordinance already gave that power. And then we got it apparently after that round. So we didn't participate. And then COVID hit. And this whole thing kind of went out of everybody's brain. And then they started it up again after COVID, but they couldn't get a rate better than JCP and L. So nothing happened. The borough wasn't informed of anything. And then all of a sudden this year, they got a rate better than JCP and L. They reactivated it. We have an ordinance that says the mayor can sign a contract at any time. Carla slipped it into a whole signing package because she and I are both clerks. We both know you've got to have a resolution behind it, but an ordinance outweighs a resolution. Um, and the rest is history, including some angry citizens that they, you know, we missed presentations. We missed all kinds of stuff because it wasn't on anybody's radar screen. Um, Brian hunted down Lisa and explained to her that the other than Bill Hans, who's a part-time employee, and Jeremy Long, every single person on this downstairs floor has flipped. So we've had clerk between clerk she knew and Carla. Uh, everybody else is gone. The council has flipped. And in fact, some places, in some positions, it's flipped twice. So um, we, well, I want to apologize for all the misunderstanding about what happened and whatever. I know we've had a lot of people opt out because they were really taken back on this. So uh, we, I invited Lisa in to just do a brief um, summary of the highlights of this program and what it can do for residents. And we sent out a town-wide uh, email saying, watch it tonight live, or you can always watch it on YouTube later, or come here if you have real questions. So Lisa, it's all yours. Thank you, and no apology necessary. Um, governmental entities change all the time. Um, it was just a fall through the cracks kind of a moment. Um, happy to say that there are no fees, penalties, or anything like that associated with the program prohibited in the regulations. So any resident wishing to opt out or opt in can do so at any time during the program. So once they have more information, if they've already opted out, they do have the opportunity to come back in and vice versa. As they get more information, if they decide, hey, this isn't for me, they can always opt out. Even though we're past that 30-day opt-out period, residents can still opt it out any time that they want to. So I just want to cover um, what government uh, energy aggregation or community energy can aggregation is. sit down this institution microphone so that you can they can hear it. It gets reported from Gotcha. Me. Right. So um, energy, energy deregulation is how we got here. Um, so before 1999, um, generators, electricity generators, passed electricity directly through to our um, electric, electric distribution companies, in our case, JCP and L. And then they pass the electricity on to the customer. So think back to Bell Telephone before we deregulated telephone, right? Before you, you had no choice as to who your long distance provider was. Same thing here. 
1999, we deregulated delivery from supply. So all we did was introduce another component uh, between the generator and the utility company called the supplier. Suppliers purchase electricity from the generators. They then provide it to our electric, electric distribution companies who provide it to the customer. Still one bill from JCPNL, just sort of, it's bifurcated. We've got delivery charges and we've got supply charges. All we do in the energy aggregation program is replace the state selected, state awarded generation, or I'm um, sorry, suppliers with another supplier at a lower rate. We can only do this program if the, the rate that we achieve at auction is lower than what the basic generation service rate is at the time of auction. That's why the pause between November 2021 and May 2024. There was a there was a long period of time there where we just couldn't get a rate that was competitive. So the state holds a basic generation service auction every February. Uh, it is for all four electric distribution companies in the state. Electric suppliers are awarded, prices are set. Those prices take effect in June of that same year. So by going out with a smaller aggregate, different aggregate, going out at a different time of year, we at the local level hope to beat that price to compare. All of the documents for the Community Energy Aggregation Program are reviewed by the Board of Public Utilities, Ratepayer Advocate, and because you are part of a cooperative, we have the added level of Department of Community Affairs. Department of Community Affairs also oversees our online auction platform, and we are um, licensed in the state of New Jersey to do that as well. So again, all we're doing is replacing the suppliers who is picking up that generation from the generator, delivering, delivering it to the LDC. That's all we're doing in the program. Um, you are part of a cooperative that is 13 towns strong. Um, you've got towns from, I'm sorry, 14 towns. You've got towns in Hunterdon County, you have towns in Somerset, you have a town in Essex County, um, and you have a, um, a, a few towns in Morris County. It is called the Hunterdon Area Energy Cooperative. It is not geographically tied to Hunterdon County. So um, you're in there with um, those, those 13 other towns. The Borough of Califon is your lead agency. So if we um, are successful at auction, on the day of auction, Califon is the one that says, we're gonna go for it. We do not recommend taking um, any, making any award less than 5% savings to residents. We were able to achieve a 5% savings this time through. The last round, I think we were more, more at the 7%, but the fact that we were able to provide any savings after such a long break and with utility rates just going up exponentially year after year, there's a little bit of savings there if the resident decides that they want to stay in. Again, they're certainly welcome to opt out of this program. They're not obligated in any way. The rate is not affected um, by attrition. So if you have... 2,000 residents in a town and 1,999 opt out, that one individual left in the program will receive that program rate for the program term. Um, it's an all-in situation. It's the way that the regulation is written. Um, it is an opt-out program, not an opt-in. Um, so the Government Energy Aggregation Act of 2003 is where this started. Uh, the state initially started with municipalities being able to aggregate together their municipal accounts. And from that grew the residential accounts in 2012. So the, the Board of Public Utilities essentially says, listen, we know that you have a better shot sometimes, depending on the market, of getting a lower rate than what we could get in February of that year. So they allow municipalities to, to take on that responsibility and do that at a local level. Again, we cannot make an award unless the price is lower than the basic generation service rate. Um, so we did that on May 22nd, 2024, the 100 and co-op went out to bid and IDT Energy was our lowest bidder. And that was a 15 month contract that started with meter reads in September, 2024, will run through November, 2025. Uh, in August of 2025-ish, we will look to see uh, where we are as far as um, maybe extending the current contract term. If we're not successful with that, we'll go back out to auction. If we're successful, the whole process starts over again. Uh, we deal with the information packets. Um, we'll do the 30-day opt-out period again. 
residents wishing to opt out can certainly do that. Any resident that permanently opted out, and I do have your, your um, enrollment numbers with me tonight so far, we have a permanent opt out feature, which means if a resident says, hey, thanks, no thanks, I'm gonna take a pass. There's a one-time opt out, um, which would remove them from this round of the program. Because you know, I, I'm referring to old, pro, uh, old rounds of the program, uh, they would have to opt out again if we make another award. There's a permanent opt-out feature that says, thank you, no thank you, seriously, don't include me again. We pull those residents out of the eligible list provided to us by JCPNL for that next round. They will not be, be disturbed. They could join the, um, the program, but they would have to actively do that. We, they, it would not be an opt-out situation for them, it would be an opt-out. Um, so with that, I just wanna go through your numbers because I did bring them with me. Lisa, before you yeah. do that, I mean, one of the concerns that I heard from some residents is that if we have a power outage, JCPLs are going to come running into services. Unsure. They have no idea who each individual customer supplier is. Um, and you are on, that's the delivery side of things. Nothing in that relationship between the customer and JCPNL on the delivery side changes in this program. We are just changing who the LDC is buying the energy from, not how they're distributing it. So lines, wires, meter reads, um, billing questions, all still handled through JCPNL. And no, they have no idea um, that, you know, Mayor, you are on this third party supply, um, this councilman is on the basic generation service. This one over here is on 100% energy through a completely different third party supplier. They have the, the, the guys repairing the lines, no idea. Um, it it's all just depends on where you are in the repair line. Um, and that's also, it brings up another good point. Still one bill from JCPNL. Not like you're gonna get a bill from the supplier and a bill from JCPNL. Still that same bill. The only thing that changes is um, where your supply charges are noted. It will say IDT Energy, and it will give you your charges for that billing period. In the message portion of the bill, right near the supply charges, will be a message from JCPNL that says, hey, if you were with the basic generation service, you would have paid X this month. So it's right on the bill, whether there was savings, whether there was not. We also, through our web portal, have the ability for residents to go in, set up a password for their account, and we track the savings for them month by month. It's actual savings. It's um, basic generation service rate can change quarterly and does. Uh, there's a uh, quarterly reconciliation rate from JCPNL that comes through. We don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what that's going to be. I know historically what it's been. Um, the 5% sort of where we are. Um, where we took the pricing, we allow for that. Um, some months you'll be paying, you'll be saving more than 5%. Some you'll be saving more like 4%, but we, we made the, we cleared that hurdle um, with that reconciliation number. Um, so a resident can go on, look at, you know, September, October, November, and see each month what the performance was for the program. Uh, additionally, Flemington Borough, I can give you your login and password number. You can pull your aggregate report for your residents. You would not be able to see individual savings, but you would be able to see the savings for your residents that are participating in the program. I can also provide that to you um, monthly, quarterly, however often you wanna have that, just so that you can see. We want transparency for the residents so that they can see it without having to keep track of their bills, start their own spreadsheet, things like that. Um, so right now I have 200. Can I ask a question? Yes. Why would people opt out? What are the reasons for people opting out? Uh, not not understanding what the program is. Education. Is. Education. And if they have been burnt. Perception. Yep. If they've been burnt by their own individual third party supply contract, um, these the this the GEA program does not allow for auto renewal without notifying residents. It does not allow for changes in price mm -hmm. without notifying residents. Mm -hmm. Um, it does allow for early termination if, let's say, if the basic generation service drops considerably lower than what we're, we've got through the program rate. The agreement allows us to go back to the supplier and say, hey, the BGS rate's going to drop X. We need to drop our price so that we're still maintaining that 5% savings threshold. 
Can you do that? If they say no, there's also uh, a clause in there that says, if we can't reach a, a, a mutual agreement, um, they can terminate the program early. They can say, yeah, I can't beat that. You're right, people are gonna opt out. I'm just gonna end it early. We've had it work both ways in previous cooperatives. The other thing that we can do if they're unwilling and we're underwater, we'll send a notice out to residents that reminding them, you can opt out anytime. We are encouraging you to revisit. Here's the new price, here's the program rate, decide what you want to do. Plus, the letter that was sent out was very like menacing. The and, JCPNL letter was and, yes, Cor agreed. Yes, Corte McNally found out that it was sent by JCPNL, yes. not by your company, Correct. because they don't want anybody leaving. Correct. Even though it doesn't hurt them. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a better version of what it used to be. It used to be far worse. The letter. Yes. We worked with the BPU and Ratepayer Advocate to fix that for years. That's improved. <laughs> Yes. Yes. It's very confusing. And residents have no idea if they missed listen, the information packet was six pages long, plus two opt out parts. It's a little confusing. I'll admit it, but we have to do it the way that the Board of Public Utilities says we have to do it. You have to do it in writing. Um, we do not door knock. We do not make phone calls. We do not email. The only information provided to us by JCPNL is the customer account, the account holder's name service address, mailing address, and their 20-digit JCPL customer number. I have no phone numbers. I have no emails. Uh, we won't door knock. Sometimes uh, other third-party suppliers get wind that you're in a program, and they'll door knock and say, hi, I'm with the I'm with Flemington Burroughs Energy Program. I just need to see a copy of your bill. And just like that, um, somebody could be, be slammed. Um, so I just want to make residents aware that we don't do that. Uh, the only way that we would call a resident is they called in and, and left a message for us. Um, but yeah, there's there's consumer protections in here. Again, it wasn't wasn't designed to confuse. I know it is confusing, especially since your residents haven't been through it before. Um, so I am more than happy to, if if council would like, to set up another outreach meeting here for anybody that wants to come or another Zoom, just to give the presentation again make residents aware, what it, uh, aware of what the program does, what it was intended to do, what it doesn't do, and clear up some of that confusion. You don't have to, I'm just saying I'd be more than willing to, if that's something that you think would help residents get a better understanding. Um, we, you had two seconds. Just wanna to get to your opt-out numbers. Second to last. Second to last. Like buried it basically all right so um since july 15th uh the eligible account list um just so that we understand what eligible means what uh, what what we use as eligible that is any customer residential customer not already under contract with a third-party supplier at the time that we do the program doesn't have net meters for solar and um there's also a time of day meter that's it's, it's grandfathered uh, and it's it's a time it, the rates that are set for off peak usage are so low I can't we would hurt if you're using that meter correctly by trying to save you money we could have, end up costing you money so we pull those those types of meters out of the list so after we got finished scrubbing the list we had 2542 accounts that were mailed the information packets um, since then, since July 15th, we've had 135 opt-outs um, due to undeliverable mail by the U.S. Postal Service. According to the regs, and rightfully so, those residents didn't have a chance to be educated about the program. They must be opted out. So there was 135 right off the bat. We had 68 one-time opt-outs, and we have 52 permanent opt-outs, and we have 31 residents who opted up into the 100% green program option, which is 100% renewably sourced energy. So um, that's sort of where you stand right now. After the JCPNL letter and after we do the enrollments, there'll be some more rejections by the utility. Um, people can move, um, people get behind on their bills. If someone gets behind on their bills, they will be dropped from the program because we do not allow for um, two separate bills. So JCPNL, if you get behind on your bills, will only collect for their portions of the bill. 
we don't allow the supplier to continue to provide service and bill their own bill. So that person would drop. Once they get caught up, they can certainly re-enroll in the program. But auto pay, JCP and all auto pay still is Oh, well, everything is still the same. Absolutely. Um, if you have auto pay set up, because again, your bill's coming from JCP and L, go uh, directly exactly as it is now. If you have any kind of warranty service or um sort of those checkup services through JCP and L, all those remain in place. Anyone on utility assistance. Um, so lie heap universal um, service those kinds of that's all remains in place anyone i don't know if your residents have access to community solar yet or not um, but if they were to this um, uh, does not impact their their credits through community solar either it will impact somebody that has solar panels on their house which is why we pull those meters out the credit will only be applied to the utility portion of the bill, so that delivery portion of the bill. As soon as we switch the supplier, sometimes the utility does not pass those credits onto the supply side of the charge. And it does a disservice to the resident. So we pull that up. Anybody have any questions for this? Yeah, I just uh, Were you here on uh, August 6th? I was. Mm -hmm. Cool. I have no idea about that. Um, I was. Sorry. I was on our website and everything. Nobody showed that. Yeah, no one came. I swear I read that. Um, also, just confirm, and I might have missed this earlier in the presentation, this is not similar to those other uh, third-party supplier programs with, let's say, a variable rate that might, you know, see your uh, electricity bill skyrocket 6,000% or whatever ridiculous one. Correct. Thank you. I feel like that's kind of the, giving this kind of program a bad... Absolutely. Yeah. And this program, um, to your point, was actually um, to sort of stem that, that gap. Um, polar Vortex in 2014. I know I'm going way back. But anyone on an individual third-party supply contract back in 2014, the, the, the cold snap that happened across the country was exquisite. And anyone in a third-party supply contract of their own did see that immediate jump of an on I don't know I'm not with six thousand percent but it was it was hefty. So that was right around the time that the board was promulgating the regs for the residential program. So all of that sort of factored into the way that the regs are written and the way that the regs are enforced is to make sure that there is no predatory contracting. There is no auto renew at a rate that's higher than the BGS. Yes, we have to pass through any state approved changes. Say there's a sales and use tax. We had it eons ago, a few years ago, where it came down and it went down again. Um, those changes we have to pass through. It's a law. We have to make those changes. But we notified residents, hey, your rate's going to come down exodus because sales tax went down in the state of New Jersey. So we're passing that on. Those are the kinds of changes that can be made to the price. But again, we have to allow residents 30 days to make another decision about staying in or opting out. Postcards are sent and they're reminded there's an 800 number to call. They can do it online um, and uh, they can also do it through their utility. JCP now will always take the out now. Shop. <clears throat> Sorry, quick yeah. question. Um, you answered part of it. Um, who would not benefit from this would be people with solar panels. Correct. Who would best benefit as a <clears throat> as a customer? Everyone benefits. It's the same. It's the same five percent savings across the board. Um, if you use less energy in the summertime, that's the only time I think that like if you're a super aggressive, um, you know, energy consumer in the summertime, JCP and I has a, a a bifurcated rate for summer. There's a lower rate for anything up to 600 kilowatt hours, and then anything over that is a higher rate. We're using our air conditioners and we're, you know, cool filters, all that fun stuff. So um, the rate through the program is that 0.1119 cents, regardless of season, regardless of time of year, regardless of what JCPNL is doing on the basic generation service side. I have um, two other questions. Sorry, just your. You work for? I work for uh, Commercial Utility Consultants. We are one of the appointed consultants for the 100 Area Energy Cooperative. So you don't work for like IDT Energy nope. or anything like that, right? 
So I, I feel like a lot of people probably saw that bill come in the mail. Uh, did the first thing was Google IDT Energy and immediately saw that the first like ten results are not good uh, at all. Um, and that's I guess who we've gone with. I, I mean we they can prove right. Like I don't. Yes, uh, and by the way, the Board of Public Utilities and Ratepayer Advocate on top of them in this program. How they behave in their individual third-party contracts, I cannot speak to that. But in this program... Just because yes. when you when you Google them, they, they really got to improve their SEO marketing and, and what yes. it's and not a good book. <laughs> yeah, to your point, Councilman, um, you will find that of all third-party suppliers. Yeah, I mean, my friends have no. people knock on their door and it, anytime I look it up, I'm like, don't do not touch them. <laughs> exactly. Does anyone know if you have an ordinance regarding um, solicitation? Of course you do. Yeah. They, okay. yeah. they, all, they, all, they, they, they all say the same thing. It's in my car. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, where's, really? where's your where's your your yeah, solicitation I, license? And they say it's in my car. I've called the police before to say, listen, I know we have an ordinance. Like there is a person wandering the neighborhood mm -hmm. signing people up. I mean, mm -hmm. this is an enforceable ordinance. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just tell them I that they I, the councilman and I send them to town. There you go. Okay, good. No, yeah. I tell them that they have an option to go down to their truck and get their license and yeah. show it to me or get out of town it's on the mayor. Right. So and you know who supplied and who has it. But yes, to your point, mm -hmm. um, we can only clean them up and clean their behavior up with them staying in Correct. And then one more quick one. So right now we have a contract. To do this, yes. you have an ordinance, you have an, ordinance an ordinance, and a resolution that you authorize to join the 100 area energy co op. Okay. If you do not want to do this again, all you have to do is pass an ordinance to say, We're out. Mm -hmm. I filed that with local government services, Department of Community Affairs, and we remove you from the co op. But what about this? The mayor signed off. Well, this is the thing it's in the ordinance that the mayor has perpetuity to sign this contract, and I don't like that. I, I would like to have our attorney mm -hmm. amend the ordinance mm -hmm. that um, it just puts us into the program, but that by resolution, uh, whenever there's an opportunity to do this program, because it's not every year, yep. um, it only is when the rate's better, that there has to be a resolution passed by the council authorized for the mayor to sign it. Because then it's all done in public, it's vetted, mm -hmm. you can come back here and remind everybody. So I think I'd like to see if the council of grace has something introduced at the next meeting, just fixing that. Clean that up. There are a lot of um, other municipalities that participate, and we have more than just the hundred and co-op. We have four others um, that, regardless of what their ordinance says, we still have to go present, have the resolution passed to memorialize. We're going to sign this contract. Here's what it is. And we present at that meeting before that happens. That would have happened had anybody remembered, remembered. any or known anything about this program, but well, after well, five the, years. COVID yes. as well, they probably, everybody knew that. Well, so, no, but they didn't even go out to bid. I mean, yeah. that, no, we went, out, we went out to bid. We oh, were not successful. Oh, you did? Oh, yeah. COVID yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Oh, boy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, there's a page in here that literally yes. lists how many times we went out. It's very depressing for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, we, start, we started to try to renew this thing um, March 30th, 2021, May 20th, 2021, September 22nd, October 22nd, 21. There's, yeah, it just was a, it was brutal. Yes, like I said, I just, it's, I've just never seen an ordinance that authorizes the mayor powers like to just keep entering into a contract. So I'm much more comfortable yeah. fixing that ordinance and requiring a resolution. Because like I said, even the first year, same attorney wrote the resolute ordinance and then the following week had them do a resolution authorizing the mayor to sign it. So the ordinance, the resolution was like that. What? 2020-20 was the Yeah, I have that here, but I, when I give it up in your code book, do you know special authority? It's in the ordinance. Okay. Didn't end up in the code book. But I will it. You okay. Change it. It's absolutely what ended up in the code, the code book is just your intent to join the collective. Oh, yeah. The network, yeah. There is nothing here. I did a triple check search and I did not find yeah, it. Yeah, no, I, mean, I read it and uh, so and Sergeant Carla, McNally read it. Carla, Carla, you, Carla you, read it. Can I look? Provide the ordinance to me. Yeah, I got to look and just I'll, 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 I'll email it to you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I Googled Flemington Ordinance 2020 20 and I got it. Oh, it's, I just take it off your Google. So I, I'll go back to that. Okay. But I'll, yeah, just email it. I'll send now. the resolution and the. That's uh, fine. Yeah. And Whatever reason it ended up in Thailand. I mean, and I, don't have to I, I the resolution doesn't end up in the public. Well, I'll look at it. I'll give you my advice. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I had a, a quick question. If we have any follow up questions, um, uh, Carla has her contact info. Carla has my contact info. Absolutely. Um, all of the program information, including a sample of all of the information kits. There's a program video. There's a frequently asked questions document that's about six pages long um, that residents can access. Um, the rate table and the program options um, are clearly spelled out right there on the web page. There's also an opt-in, opt-out, opt-up button. So residents can write there uh, on the web page. Um, they're in charge of their own destiny if they want to do it online without having to make a phone call um, or if they've uh, if the information kit with their opt-out cards are long since gone, um, there's an 800 number that they can call as well. Uh, if they want to speak to us, it's 855, oh, sorry, 866-688-5197. Before um, we let you go, Carla, I, don't, I can't read that far away. I don't know if there's any members of the public that have any questions. If they do and you want to raise their hand, we can let you in. Um, so you can ask Lisa, Anything you want. Um, nope. No, seeing none. All right. All right. And I do want to end this on a high note. Um, I know that this is Flemington's first time through, but the program's been kicking around for a while. Um, since 2019, they've had contracts. So during that time, actual savings for residents has been $1.6 million. And it doesn't sound like a lot when you break it down per individual. There's a lot of towns in here, but it does what it is designed to do. And when it's not allowed to run because we're, you know, above the BGS rate, residents go back to JCPNL and we wait for the market to come back. Um, so there is a there is a success story here already. Um, I look forward to coming back perhaps in February or at least sending you a savings report that Carla can share with all of you. And if you want me here on for the ordinance readings, I'm happy to do that as well. I'll let you know okay. in the public hearing. Thank you so much for your time. It was nice to you. It's okay. No worries. All right. Uh, back on the agenda, the six mayors report. Um, I don't have anything directly in front of me. Um, so I'll just hold off. Um, council reports uh, start at the with uh, Council President Long. Sure. Uh, just a couple of things for uh, OEM. The on a second. <clears throat> uh, OEM would like to know uh, everybody to know that as we enter Fire Safety Month this October, the Office of Emergency Management urges all residents to take important steps in fire prevention and preparedness. This is a critical time to review your home's fire safety measures. Check smoke detectors and ensure that your family is aware of your family evacuation plans. Fire safety is everyone's responsibility, and simple precautions can save lives. In addition to fire safety, uh, the office wants everyone to be reminded that um, it's hurricane season. It's still active in the Atlantic, and the tropical systems continue to pose a threat. Although the peak of the season has passed, we must remain vigilant and prepared for any potential storms that could impact our area. Be sure to review your emergency supplies, stay informed about the weather, and have a place, a plan in place in case of severe storm impacts. Also, would like to highlight the outstanding work of the Flemington Community Emergency Response Team, CERT, which recently supported the Central Jersey Jazz Festival. CERT members contributed 20 collective hours during last week's festival, ensuring the safety and well being of attendees. In addition, members logged in an additional 12 hours in collaboration with Raritan Township CERT uh, at the Community Day event this past weekend. We extend our deepest gratitude to our CERT volunteers for their ongoing dedication and service to our community. And from me, just something uh, in general. So once again, uh, I'm going to be making myself available on Saturdays in uh, the afternoon to talk to borough residents. Location will be determined. I'm primarily interested in discussing things that might not be as shiny and dopamine enriching as a social media post. Talk about town stuff, real talk. Some good old fashioned idea hatching. And these next few months, I'm working on a little project of sorts and I want to get some public feedback. I'll be sharing more before the new year, but it's got a lot to do with building some infrastructure, but not the kind you might be thinking of. A strong sense of civic duty and civic engagement does not happen overnight. It starts small and it starts with the kinds of conversations I'm hoping to be having with you. 
So as I said, more news to come. Stay tuned. And that is my report. Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Englehart. Um, we have three items. Um, the Samuel Plumbing House had a successful um, event over the weekend that was in spice. <clears throat> Excuse me, that from last weekend um, with a, a, a good, good turn, a good showing. Um, their next event is one of their biggest of the year. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I've got a, a little course. Um, is the biggest of the year. It's October 12th. Um, the pumpkin painting, which is always fun, um, from 1 to 3 p.m. on October 12th at 5 and I'll speak. Um, the other two items I wanted to mention, um, very importantly, um, Columbia American School District, our um, borough, one of our two borough um, board positions, um, one of the um, members resigned last month. So there is an open board seat. So in addition to the election coming up this, this um, November, for the reg one regular board, there's an open board seat that um, the term ends in December 2025. So essentially, there's um, an opportunity for someone to um, step up and maybe see if this is something they're interested in doing and serving the community um, by serving as a um, board of education member. Um, you don't have to run for office. You can uh, put in your interest in um, doing so by Monday on uh, September 30th at 3.30. Um, cover letter and resume um, is due to the Board of Education from the American School District. For those that don't remember, that's our um, pre-K through 12 district. And um, interviews uh, for any interested um, um, applicants is October 10th at the regular Board of Ed meeting, 7 p.m. at JP case. So basically they're looking for someone to fill the position for one year. Um, so um, that's a good opportunity um, to you know, represent your community. Um, and uh, finally, the 100, uh, 100 regional, uh, 100 Central Regional uh, High School Board of Ed meeting is tonight. So go ahead and watch it online after this meeting. <laughs> That's it. <clears throat> Excuse okay. me. Um, did you receive my email, Councilwoman Adopta? You, you mentioned that at one of the uh, so I mentioned meetings, it and I did the not get meeting. Yeah, yeah. And this I meeting I sent it again. And I did not get anything. I hate to send anything to your personal email because it's, it's operable. We'll talk it after the meeting. Okay. I, I meant to mention it at our traffic meeting the other day, and I had to run out and uh, okay. pick up my son, so we never talked about that. But yeah, I, I did look for it after we left. Yeah, no, I sent you another one a couple days ago. Okay, I, you know, like I said, we, we've been having some trouble with email, so uh, I agree. Yeah, I, I, I've had a, a lot, couple agree. things. Um, right. Marcia's, I'll send something and nobody gets it, or Marcia sends it to me and nobody yeah. gets it, so you're having the same problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, let's talk afterwards. You can fill me in on whatever the email was about. Yeah, I said, told me I sent you an email last week and you never responded, which is highly right. unusual. Very good. So I'm, I, I just, I just, asking you newsletter topics you wanted to make. You didn't get the email. Huh? No, I thought you just dissed me. No, <laughs> no, I said you know. It's easy. Can you, can you um, talk to Gary about this? I, I, I no, put something out to Gary yeah. that says that, I, that I'm having problems with my emails because the other thing I can't get, I don't know, Susan, you have this problem as well, but I can't get anybody that's external, like like um, the chief of police. I can't, Jerry doesn't show up, the father doesn't show up. Do you have that problem as well? We need them to show up. So if I try to put in their name, it doesn't show up. I have to. I have to go. Into the contact so, list. Doesn't show up at all. Oof. So, so could, could you put an email to Jerry? To Jerry. I'm sorry, to the chief. I did get that. Okay, so you got that one. Okay. No, what I'm saying is, it's I wanted to send an email hard. to Jerry. And you put a J. And I Jerry, J nothing pops up. It doesn't, it doesn't come up automatically. I put in for Robin. Nothing pops up. Oh, wow. um, I don't think it's ever done. Huh? No, mine did. Too. Mine did. Absolutely. Mine did. Absolutely. One hundred one percent it did. I, I, I sent you an email, I don't know, but earlier last week and said, I know you wanted an article from, about the parking committee, but I can't remember what else I promised you, and I never heard from you. And you never got it. Wow. You didn't call me No. 
Wow, okay. Yes, so you you know, you're going to, you'll. No, we already sent something. To no, Gary. we did. We sent something to Gary. I sent something to Gary last week and I just talked to Carl about it today because he he, he, he has an open ticket for it, but we haven't heard anything else. Okay. So, um, Carl and I are going to follow up. Because I just figured you guys are all ignoring me. No. And I'm so hard to ignore. Well, so, <laughs> I don't think it's just, I don't think it's just your email. Like, I was supposed to get an email from my campion, but after that traffic meeting with the survey, and I didn't get anything. So, I don't know if that was just that he didn't end up sending it or he normally copies me on anything. Right, so you and I did not. Okay. I was just getting the survey. I did not. So, all right. Well, we got, we got an open ticket. Yeah. We'll follow up. Thank you. Because this is upsetting. Um, okay. That's what I'm saying. I know what Susan's saying because I'm not saying from you. Okay. So. Mm. All right. So right. you're finished, Councilwoman Engelhart, right? Yes. Yeah. Councilwoman Fasaro. Mm. I have three things to you. Positive. Lowering the boom, positive. Um, positive, but I guess kind of sad for the community. Um, <laughs> our children. <laughs> well, that's an oxymoron. <laughs> well, it's sad. The Children's Library in Debbie Moore is retiring after 48 years. Mm. Am I hearing that? So she started working. 40 years. 38? 30. 38, okay. Might be a typo. So tomorrow, my three to five. Might not be. <laughs> She's been here a long time. She started when she was a teenager. Her time. I think it might be down. 38 years. So tomorrow, 3 to 5 p.m., there will be a free reception in her honor at the library. All please come if you can in the community. We wish her well. Uh, and her last day will be this Friday. So stop in before then if you can't attend tomorrow. Um, the boom. And just being part of the parking committee and having received some communications from some of the members of the community, if you are parking in residential areas, just make sure that you're being respectful of those homeowners and those residents in those buildings. Do not block driveways. Do not park in front of mailboxes. Do not damage lawns or blacktop. Um, and this is in response somewhat to one resident's uh, petition, but then also speaking with other members of the community from that same area. Uh, and then finally, I attended the Lindbergh Trail walking tour on Saturday that the Hunterdon County Historical Society. No, I don't, not the Historical Society, the Hunterdon the 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 300th. The Hunterdon 300th, okay. So the Hunterdon 300th, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, really, if you get a chance to do this ever, it was great to be able to walk through and see that architecture where people were staying. We got to go into the jail. Uh, take a lot of pictures in the jail. So um, that, that was the highlight of the tour for me, just being able to get in there. So I always tell people, the Hunter and County, Col Hunter and County Cultural and Heritage Fund History, Hunter and County Historical Society, Archives and Preserves History, and Hunter and 300 Presents History. Okay, so the Hunter and 300 yeah. presented a great uh, a great tour, and I will leave it there. But, but you can, you can about, mention you're planning on going. To, to yeah, history. so I'm planning on going on there. this Friday evening. There's a lecture at the historic courthouse. There's one on Saturday at 1 p.m. So 2 p.m. Open at 1. Then, open at 1, and then the one on Sunday. It's also at 2. It's also at 2, and then you can go in and look at the gallery beforehand and after. Yeah. And um, I don't know if they're going to let you see the jail, but like that was the highlight of my life. I've never been in jail yet. Yeah, the last, the the last three matches <laughs> all on George in Flemington, and uh, it'll be great. So hopefully it's first come, first serve on seating, no reservations required, and free uh, with refreshments. You can't beat that. So, um, okay, thank you. Um, Councilman Levitt. Yes, thank you. The uh, HBC approved one project last week. Uh, next meeting is Wednesday, October 16th. And actually, I had a question for either member of the planning board. Um, just to confirm, the historic map update is still working its way through the planning board, correct? Yes. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, no. I will be... I okay. sent that. Oh, I... Uh, Councilman Lovett? Didn't no. He didn't send it back? And vote to send it back to last meeting? I th I just looked at the agenda for tomorrow night's meeting, and it looks like it is still being continued to tomorrow night. Okay. Thank Maybe you're right. Yeah. Let's see. I think you might be right. That's um, right. They, did, they did continue it. Yeah, she's right. Yep. They continued it. Item number nine, master plan, mm -hmm. August, carry from August 27th and September 10th. Yes, because there was a couple of updates that the HPC was doing based on public comment. Okay. Um, real quick, mm -hmm. uh, two more things. Uh, I will be attending the 99th Annual Shade Tree Conference in Atlantic City on October 17th to receive the NJ Urban and Community Forestry Community Representative Training. 
Uh, this will satisfy some requirements for a few grants from them, and uh, that might be good for the borough. And as always, please keep your animals under control. And that is everything I've got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> All right. Council's never met my dog. Never. That's the main part of it. So, um, <laughs> just a couple of things, but I'm going to ask um, the chief to come up um, because I really want to make this focus about the police. Um, um, two things. One is, is that the rules and regs that I sent to everyone um, for approval, so you need to make sure that that's on the next agenda to get that approved. Um, yeah, so a couple of things that I brought up interest. I, I, I got no comments. No, I made comments when you we first got did about. You, did, did you see any? I didn't see any. Oh. Marcia, you had no one about um, Ash. About, uh, yeah, I did. I'm, I'm just saying, you I may have. have. I, just, see I have not seen them. I mean, Are you sure you sent an email? I didn't send <laughs> out an email about it. I brought it up in our meeting. Are you sure? In other words, it was just, they were minor. Yeah, oh, yeah, one was about. Um, about promotions should be coming specific. Should you be... want to think? I have it. No, I have, have, I have to go through. I have to go through right, my can you, can, you, can you just redo it and then we'll yeah. send it to Jerry? And Jerry, you can just you yeah. know, update yeah. us, whatever. We can update it and let's just send it to. There was one where well. the chief, yeah. the chief yeah. had authority to do something and said, really, she would come yes, to the council. That's yeah. Yes, that's true. I do remember that. Thank you. Okay, I'm not saying. I do remember that. Yeah, there was that one. I thought someone was taking that out. Was Who was supposed to take it? That. Well, you got somebody whoever has the. All right, we'll talk to that. Okay. I, I remember. I'll find my copy and I'll now give you a buzz. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a lot. Yeah. No. It was only a couple of comments, but yes. nevertheless, let's make sure that we all come for it there. If we can bring it back, then we need to get approval. I'll send it back out. Yeah. We need to get yeah. approval on the next one because he's waiting Sounds for good. it. Sounds the, the other thing is is that um, um, before you get started to it, I am going to work on the next newsletter. I was hoping to get it out by the end of this month, but my schedule is kind of got uh, jacked around. So, um, Shade Tree, if you guys put something in, library, if you put something in, if you can put something in, that'd be great. Um, I already have stuff for from the from um, Jerry Marsha is actually putting some stuff in the mayor's act, putting some stuff in. So, you guys can give to give me that within the next week. If that's not if that's unreasonable, please tell me. Um, because my time is kind of getting limited. Um, so, so I did send you um, an article late today for the parking committee updates. Um, I no, not you. at all. I you, promise like, you, I haven't like, done anything. Even at five thirty tonight, I have done anything. Yes, Holy I was on my e I was on my email just before I came in here because I ran home, hurry up, got on the email just in case I missed something, and then I came here. I don't have to do about this. Okay. okay. I'm just telling you. I'm, I'm, no, I'm I, tell you. I just yeah. and some stuff is getting through. Like I got the the, the police um uh, uh, the thing that you know what this got, I get some stuff. You know what? It seems like it's, 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 it's just started happening within the yeah. last several weeks. Did you get the email I sent out to everybody with the um uh the sign ordinance? You didn't get the sign ordinance from Chris that I sent to everybody last week. And then gave Giuliani comments. You can get that either. No. Okay, this is mm. nuts. All right. Well, as I was gonna say, I sent you, I sent <laughs> you never. I sent you the newsletter article, which is done, so okay. I'll get it to you one way or okay. another. Okay. But if let me talk to you, let me just talk to Gary send, tomorrow. Yeah, and, and then just text text me whatever else you want me to write. Okay, okay, I will. Thank you. But it's only I will. I appreciate that. Science. So anyway, let me. You got I, I, I want to turn science. this back to to um to the police chief. So as you remember, uh, if you recall last meeting, I had talked about community policing and what a great job um they're doing and. Um, with some of the programs, but I didn't want to spill um, the thunder and I wanted the police um, chief to come in and talk about it. I will say this, they had an event yesterday in the hills that was absolutely amazing. It was so cool. It was so great. Um, I turned to the chief and I said, I am so proud of you. I'm so proud of these guys for doing this. Um, they did a remarkable job. Um, we'll do better than making it where. 
We invited to the PBA. I was yeah. invited to the PBA's baseball or softball or football or soccer game oh, a couple the, uh, weeks ago. I was invited to that. Yeah, that. Well, I went, yeah, but that was after. Yeah, yeah, but I don't do Facebook and Well, Facebook anyway, let, let, let we'll, me we'll make sure. I want to keep this better. positive because I, I just know that, that, you know, one of the things that um, I talked about is some of the some of the things that, that I was wanting the, the uh, police chief to work on, and I, I am very, very pleased to say that all of those things are being checked off this list. Um, again, I said um, to the police chief, and I'll make it known to everybody else, that I'm extremely proud of how he's moved forward with all of this stuff. And one is this, so I'm going to turn it over to him, let him talk about what, what's going on in the department and some of the things that they have uh, buttoned down. Yeah, um, well, I'll start with community policing since we're on the topic of that. Um, we have uh, successfully last night or yesterday did the Hunter Hills uh, community, kind of a community day. We kept it small for the fact that um, uh, the population of Hunter Hill is high. Um, we didn't have a lot of uh, resources and everything to go out for a town-wide thing. And, I, and I'm really trying to uh, address and, and outreach to every area of the town not just this blanket, everybody come like really specific um, to that area. Because I mean, the problems are the same, but there is also, we want to hear from individuals and in, in close net block communities type of areas. That's why we, um, we were contacted by New York Avenue. Um, and on the 19th, sent three officers over and, spit, and they spoke with approximately 20 residents, 17 residents about their issues and concerns, what they were seeing in their neighborhood. That was pretty successful. Uh, they were uh, reached out to me and, and thanked us for, for doing that and addressing their needs. We talked about um, uh, cameras, how important they are, register them with us, what, what the process is with that, the use of 911. I'm trying to encourage everybody not to, um, speaking with a uh, the mayor and Councilman Parker, a lot of folks rely on you guys to talk about issues of speeding, parking, or whatever have you. Those are time sensitive issues that if they called us, we can deal with it and not just talk about it. Right, you're telling them to do yeah. <laughs> So um, I think we need to echo that in the newsletter as well. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's what we've talked about. And that's, about that's about why it, agree with you. one of the things, like uh, for an example, there was an incident where um, a resident had somebody walking around their house. The neighbors saw it. They didn't call us. They called everybody kind of in the neighborhood and then, and, then, and then told them about it later. Hey, by the way, there's somebody walking around your house earlier. So, um, you know, everybody, I don't want people to be afraid to call 911 or assume that uh, all their information has to be given. You you can remain, remain anonymous. You don't, like, if you see something, say it and, you know, it is what it is. Even if you know you, you see something and you want to leave your name and you want to follow up, uh, call back. The officers will do that. But the main thing is making that call, making that report, so we can address it in a timely manner. Um, so my my challenge to you guys um, would be uh, if interested to reach out and host your area of town, um, reach out to your neighbors and see if they would want to come over, meet somewhere. And uh, we'll send some officers over, you know, kind of get the feed of what uh, what they want covered, what kind of issues they have. We can we can run uh, searches on what uh, type of activity is happening in that specific area, and address it uh, accordingly. You know, I think this is a brilliant idea. I mean, I think you know, for us, um, because one of the things that um, the chief is, you know, we've been working together on. And that is is getting the police embedded into the community so they know who they are and what their purpose is and not being afraid to pick up the phone and call or not being able to be afraid to call. Yeah. They know who they are. They know yeah. that this is the chief. They know that these are the lieutenants. They know these are the officers as opposed to just one or two officers. They know the entire department. My so this is what he's trying to do. My, I, I saw it on Facebook and my yeah. eyes lit up. I'm like, I want to do that. So yeah, definitely and, reach out and, and we'll, we'll help tomorrow, yeah, so. yeah. And, you know, uh, you know, we'll catch up and see what you, uh, what kind of concerns or what you'd like covered and 
can address those things. Like I said, it's it's uh, it's specialized. It's not cookie cutter. It's not like we'll come out and give the same magic show when they get special. <laughs> um, with that said, what one of the starting events that we did with that started out in May. Um, Giselle Quino, uh, the our officer who's a uh, bilingual. Uh, created a situation or a program with um, United Way where we kind of had an outreach thing with, with them where they, uh, it was like a class that we offered uh, once for uh, once a month for about three months. And it was, it was just a real um, educational thing. Same thing we do with uh, the, the New York Avenue. It's to talk about expectations of what uh, you expect from the officer and what the officer kind of expects from you. Um, you know, with the cultural differences and everything else. So everybody's on the same page. Um, topics that we covered was domestic violence, cyber crime. Uh, they got to meet the canine officer and dog. Uh, 911, when to call, what to do on a traffic stop, what to do in a motor vehicle crash. Um, topics like that just, you know, um, I think is good for everybody to have like a refresher because obviously or even just to know about yeah yeah because the uh, you know to the average person uh, you know to get stopped a lot of people's in, uh, adrenaline gets excited they they want to know what's wrong people get defensive and and really it could just be the smallest little thing Jerry I've heard from a number of people especially at Prospect Hills there used to be a neighborhood watch program here and that officer left and never revitalized it is there any chance of revitalizing that, at least in Prospect Hills, which still wants a neighborhood watch program. Part of, the, part of the neighborhood watch programs, um, uh, Mr. Parker and I talked about it, is I'm, that program was good, and, and we checked the numbers of those areas for the neighborhood watches for crime issues. That program actually started turning into a, a representative for the tenant and the landlord. You know, it started um, people with other complaints went from policing to you know my my uh my my carpet's dirty I need new paint you know whatever whatever it would be as far as a uh, a representative that a tenant landlord issue <clears throat> and some civil stuff um that's why I'd like to stick with um trying this going in and speaking with them and circle back um not a traditional neighborhood watch where um you know there's captains and nurses uh like it's a structure like the police department where you contact this person. Uh, I think a lot of those organizations and we can help them, especially through social media, they can connect themselves. Uh, the, my, my word would be call the police and then talk amongst yourselves as opposed to talk amongst yourselves and then call the police. So I want everybody to have that freedom of calling us and then talking amongst their, their neighbors that, hey, just so you know, I, I called the police yesterday and this is the topic so, and why. And, and like I spoke with, uh, had the officers talk to the New York Avenue group. Um, we're happy to circle back. You know, um, we'll have, we're happy to uh, come in every so often and, and speak with them. Um, if they, you know, if something pops off and we feel that a neighborhood watch would be a good thing, then, then it's something we can do. But I think the neighborhood watches should be some sort of program that is there now. You know, like just just watching out for one another is kind of a neighborhood watch. You don't need the the formality of a of calling yourself something. And, and so you know what? Maybe as you're saying that, I, I, I sort of agree with you. Um, as you're saying that, I think maybe if we can put something in writing to and just to kind of people's door that yeah, you know, yeah, kind of like when you see something, say something, don't be afraid to do this. Da da da. Yeah, I mean, we can talk about that, but I think maybe that. To embellish upon what you did yesterday, the turnout that yesterday was actually pretty impressive. Um, and then I saw people starting to, I, I had to leave um, way before it was over, but I started seeing people walking towards it as I was leaving. Yeah, it's, it um, picked up for that dinner crowd. And, right, right. So, I mean, maybe just embellish upon that, but yeah. But, yeah, and we plan I mean, on doing that right. with other areas. It's just, uh, you know, time, officer time, getting people in and out. And, uh, just balancing out, you know. Uh, I know Flemington Arms is uh, interested in doing the same thing we yeah. did at Hunter Hills, yeah. And uh, we definitely are reaching out to them. Uh, stole some of my uh, my thunder there with the parking <laughs> stuff. 
um, <laughs> with the parking <laughs> issues there. But it's okay, just, I'll share it with you. Your rest, your sure. local Gladys Kravitz. <laughs> um, we had just talked about that yesterday. They just needed to bring that up. Well, yeah. I, I, I will say this, though. I, I really like the idea of them telling you first because I've got a bit of a reputation. <laughs> well, ask her or have her call. Hey, yeah, them. right. This because they know I'm always nosy and I'm always looking yeah. around. Just Check in with you and see if uh, Yeah, did she see him if, if uh, she's five minutes right? A <laughs> um, couple of upcoming things we have um, on the 26th. We're going to go over and meet with uh, Cub Pack 61, just talking about police cars and, you know, all that good stuff. October 8th, we go over to the Salvation Army. Every uh, every year for the past three years, we've been meeting with the kids over there. We uh, have a question and answer from mm -hmm. my favorite color to my favorite movie type of stuff. Um, and uh, play some games, and, and I think they feed them a, a meal. We kind of help out giving them food. We're working on a coffee with a cop uh, around October 9th. We gotta file, uh, complete the details on that. We're gonna, I'm gonna put a couple more officers out on sip and stroll and maybe have ice cream with a cop. A couple officers wanna have ice cream, so. <laughs> Make them buy their own. <laughs> <laughs> Don't file it. No free. No free. Love it. Um, <laughs> November 2nd, we're going to be over at the Fleming Castle for coffee, and, uh, maybe some pastries, I think, right? Um, and then uh, finally, speed you well. <laughs> finally, November 29th through December 23rd, we're going to put up a uh, kind of a, a decorative tree and uh, put out a program so kids can decorate, stop by, meet an officer, put their little ornament on the tree and, and go from there. And uh you know, that'll close out the year with uh, with community policing and we'll start all over again. Nice. Nice. You doing anything for the Halloween party? We are. Um, I haven't heard much about the parade. Um, wait for Robin. Okay, the quotation marks. Yeah. That's why I called it a party. Today. Yeah. And then, um, you know, I know there's a witch walk event coming up. Yeah. Where we'll we'll be out 16th, there. Yeah. No, 25th. 25th, yeah. There's one on October 16th as well. Oh, really? Yes. No, I think it's a... Yeah, no, I, I'm just... I'll be checking on it. Okay. And then um, for Halloween, we're going to have, you know, patrols out there. We'll, we'll do the Benel Street, Broad Street, close down. Um, that seems to be the... I mean, it's, you know, on a good night with good weather, it's everywhere, but it seems like those are the big streets. Uh, you know, sorry to the neighbors that feel they're being overwhelmed with kids, but it's great. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look at my sidewalk and they keep sure, it. I'm just afraid when they come to my house. Yeah. Yeah. About that. Yeah. I have it as a note. Anything else, Jerry? That's about it. Did you get my email about the uh, the library? Thank you so much. I saw the library director reach back out to you. So he said he's going to walk it down to you. The only other thing that I will put in is that we are interviewing for the next officer on October 7th in this room. So he's got a couple of candidates that are pretty strong. So, great. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. All right. Any questions? Great. Uh, Councilman Parker, anything else to report? No, that's it. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're at public health comment session number one. Any member of the public online? Um, and Delphina. Delphina, you're on. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Delphina Picchio. I live at 909 Yorkshire Drive, which is Raritan Township. Um, I spoke at a council meeting a couple months ago, I think it was around June, about bicycle ordinance 3.72. So I just wanted to follow up with council. Um, I have two questions tonight, so I'll start with the first one. My first question is what, like where, where are we standing on this bicycle ordinance? What progress has been made? in community engagement efforts. You know, I've noticed the new signs on Main Street um, reinforcing the ordinance, but I just wanted to know what else is being done to ensure the safety of bicyclists in Flemington Borough. 
that's my first question. The police have just left, and this is a comment period by the public. Um, this is on some ongoing with the parking committee, and which is also addressing traffic safety, but it is a comment period. Okay, so yeah, I mean, um, I did follow up with council via email, and I didn't hear back from any of the council members. So, you know, I am looking to hear back about- I, You copy me on that email? Yes, I sent an email in July, I believe, of 2024. So it was a pretty lengthy email. I'm happy to resend it if anybody did not receive it, but- uh, So you can resend it. Sure, um, yeah, I'll resend it. And I'll just reemphasize what I mentioned there, which was a suggestion, you know, obviously, Working with Go Hunterdon, um, I'm sure you guys are already doing that, but for the public, you know, we don't really know what's going on. So having, you know, some updates would be great. Um, but also I suggested following maybe, you know, looking at some other town ordinances. Um, for example, the town of Princeton has a bicycle ordinance that prohibits riding bicycles on sidewalks only in the business district. So, you know, in the really main um, downtown area of Princeton. And so they have a very extensive ordinance that kind of outlines the nuances. Um, so that was something I had mentioned in my email to consider in Flemington Borough um, instead of having an outright ban on, on riding bicycles and sidewalks. So I'm happy to follow up via email again. Um, but yeah, I'm just, you know, just here to continue this conversation and see what, what's being done um, for, for the public and the bicyclists of town. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If somebody else has their hand up. I can't see. Yep. Robin. Our Robin. Mm -hmm. yeah, I gotta get better glasses. I can't see that. Yeah. I, I, okay. I, so it's not. It's not just you. Gotta like look. Okay. Robin. Everyone needs glasses. Good. Hi. Hi. Okay. Great. Um. I just had a couple of quick things to say, and I'm not sure whose picture that is, but it's great. Is that is that my picture? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what of the courthouse? Yeah, that's you, Robin. Really? Oh, I changed my profile picture, and that's really <laughs> lovely. All right, great. Um, I just wanted to say the Central Jersey Jazz Fest in, festival in partnership with Somerville was phenomenal. Uh, we had about 900 people this year, which is more than ever before. Um, while it's been on Stangle Road, it was um, a great, it was easy. It was calm. It was lovely. Everyone seemed to have a wonderful time. We have incredible pictures of, of, of a really warm and um, happy crowd that was very diverse and, um, you know, seemed to, people seem to stay for the whole evening. So I do want to thank the CERT team, the explorers, they, we saw them walking around all night. The DPW does a phenomenal job always. The police were fantastic. Um, the Stangle businesses who participated in the Stangle businesses who allowed us to close the street to have the event uh, were appreciative of everybody and my staff uh, who come to help for events were really incredible. Um, so we, we're about to start having some really busy weekends and I just wanted you to know this weekend um, there is a women business owners pop-up at Alchemy on Friday night that's really fun. On Saturday, there's a sidewalk sale on Main Street and it's Barclays celebrating Pet Store Day with giveaways and all kind and a, some Paw Patrol characters. It's going to be a fantastic um, weekend on Main Street. And then we start to get into a crush of amazing October events. So there is, and some of them are things that are coming back to town in an exciting way. So the, the, the official Stangle Antique Group is bringing back their auction um, and show at Stangle Factory. And that that's a really phenomenal um, experience. There is a bizarre bazaar 
there is on the 13th, um, there is an exciting sip and stroll on the 17th where, where the county is helping to sponsor Roxy Ballet doing a Hispanic heritage ballet performance. That's about five different uh, performances. One is about the artist Frida Kahlo. And I will encourage everybody to really come. I think it's gonna be um, a highlight of the fall. Um, we are going to celebrate, uh, the witch walk and the moon market on Friday, the 25th, we are closing the street like we did for the central Jersey jazz festival. And, um, we got a throng of people last year. So I think we're just keep getting more popular. And then we are going to decorate court street park this year. If, if everything gets permitted as I think it will, we probably will try to decorate the park Thursday, be there, um, have people be able to go through the park on Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday, 1027, we'll have the, the kids costume um, dance party. Yeah. We don't call it a parade anymore because when 300 kids show up on, out of nowhere, it's really hard to line them up for a parade. <laughs> um, uh, contact with um, the chief of police. He just mentioned that he doesn't have a lot of details about that. Can you get in contact with him tomorrow? And yeah. have on, please? It's our first uh, time working in Court Street Park. So there, there's, you know, it's not usually... Uh, we work very closely with the police and it's what we normally do on main street. So we've just had a few extra. Right. Uh, he, paper. Just, that he hasn't heard anything. So can you just, can you just reach out to him tomorrow, please? I will. And I do want to tell you that a group of main street businesses have organized to do something called first Fridays on main street. So Marie from kombucha bar who totally renovated her business um, started the concept of First Friday. She's reached out to all the other businesses and the First Friday in October will be different shops and restaurants painting and decorating pumpkins. So it's a free drop-in activity at, at any of, of the businesses that are participating. And if the police want to come and help decorate pumpkins on First Friday evenings, that would be awesome too. And the last thing is our, our fall flowers. Robin? Yes. The first Friday events are all evenings? They're all evenings. Early evenings, like five till eight. Thank you. And um, the, uh, we, we are thinking about maybe doing a chili cook-off and some music uh, for the first Friday in November and then the first Friday in S December. And I can't believe it's almost here, but it is, is the tree lighting. So whatever activity they do will, uh, coordinate with the tree lighting. And our fall flowers will be arriving, um, in the next two weeks. So it'll, uh, help brighten town and make us look a little more ready for autumn and um that's that's everything for me but again thank you to everyone who helped us with the jazz festival and with all these events anybody else with their hand up robin uh carla um maureen Go ahead, Hi, how are you? Um, Hi, uh, Maureen Keelan. Oh, did I just cut you off? Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, is it okay now? Yep. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Um, I just wanted to say I was um really pleasantly surprised yesterday i was not expecting um i think it started at two o'clock the police community party um i was told by one of the residents a little boy that was eight years old like maybe a half hour before it um through the window he yelled up to me that the police are coming for a party 
So I just laughed and Googled really quick because I said, I don't think so. <laughs> but he was correct. And they loved it. The kids had a blast. And it was really a good day for them. Um, I can't tell you how many of the young boys were blown away by the dog. Um, they brought the police dog. And just the games all day. And the music. They Whoever put the music list together, it was perfect for children and just play and young, young kids and even teenagers and young adults. So just all day long um, from two to four, I mean, two to six, uh, it was really beautiful. And I, I was so surprised that I have about 50 to a hundred pictures of faces of the kids just all lit up. Um, having, having the junior police there was one of the best parts to watch. Um, the little girls and the young boys interacting with them. It was just, um, I could send you some pictures via email if you want some that will, you know, not show faces, but show far away faces. It's just beautiful. And I thought it was a really good thing. And I'm sure the police department would love yeah. to have some of those pictures. Share this. Share this. I, I can do that. I'll definitely send them to the police. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah. um, yep. Thank and you. they asked, a couple of the kids asked me, why are they doing this? Why, how come they're doing this? Why are they here? They kept asking that question, which I found um, interesting. I said, exactly what you said. They're they're working with the community. They want to get to know the community. And they they right. were over the top excited about that. Yeah. So yeah. I just really was surprised. Uh, I was not expecting it. I don't know how. That went under my nose, by the way. <laughs> I must have missed the memo. Um, the kids say that a flyer went around to each front door, but I get a lot of flyers, so it must have got blown away. I didn't know about it. Not that I know of, but, uh, but it was a really great day, and I would encourage them to do it in other areas whenever they can. It, it seemed like a lot of work. It didn't seem small to me. It was a lot. Um, it was trucks pulled in, and there was um, like an ice, uh, an ice vendor truck. Um, there was a taco vendor truck, um, sack races, bubbles, machines for the kids, and they ran around all day. The parents sat on the outskirts and watched. Another inst interesting dynamic, just really smile faces um, everywhere. There were smiling faces everywhere. So it was a really uh, nice day, and it was a beautiful day yesterday for it. So it worked out perfect. Thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. It's really, it's really yeah. nice to hear. Well, yeah, thank you guys very much for arranging that. Um, really good, that really good stuff. Department. That was all the police department, just so that you know. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good yeah. night. Thank you. All right. Good night. Anybody else? I see still a hand up. Is that? Oh, it was morning. morning. Oh, okay. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, I can't read anything. I just see yellow. Okay. Uh, we're up to approval of minutes. Um, regular session, September 9, 2024. Can I have a motion? Is there a second? No, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Executive session September 9, 2024. Can I have a motion? So I move. Is there a second? Sorry, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're on to the second page two, number 10, consent agenda. Item 2024-132, resolution appointing fund commissioner and alternate fund commissioner for the 2024 fund year. Um, this has fallen under my radar and uh, we should have fund commissioners to go to uh, insurance uh, fund meetings. And um, uh, the last fund commissioners appointed were Mike Humphrey and the alternate was Rebecca Newman. So I like to go to these things and go into insurance fund meetings for years. So uh, this would appoint me and Carla as my alternate. Can I have a motion? Long move. There's a second. Engelhart will second. Uh, roll call, please. Our Councilwoman Engelhart. Yes. Councilwoman Fasara. Yes. Councilman Levitt. Yes. Council President Long. Yes. Councilman Parker. Yes. Okay, very good. Uh, introduction of Ordinance 2024 21, an ordinance amending Chapter 4 licensing to institute regulations for advertising signage in certain instances. Um, this was circulated except Councilman Parker didn't get it. Mm -hmm. um, we did get comments back from our property maintenance officer requesting, um, looking at our attorney, he requested- He wants findings for failure to remove. He wants, right. Per our conversation, I made no changes. He wants to know what? So, there are, so there's nothing punitive 
<laughs> we have a we have a you've got to take your signs down, you know, three days after an event or whatever, but there's nothing punitive. There's no or you're going to get fined if you don't. The violation section now is just you put up signs without getting a permit. He wants that to also be if you do not remove your signs, which is it's up to you guys. I didn't make the change because I, I, it's entirely up to you guys. Basically, whatever you want. I'll write it that way. Uh, before we get discuss this, can I have a motion to get changed, please? Well, we'll move. Can I have a second? Our first second. Okay. Um, what's the sentiments about? I mean, he said that there's no teeth and it's. You know, he just rides around all the time pulling down signs. Yes. You know, there's no teeth to make people take a sign down. Um, so. Well, that is true. It is I true. Think we did discuss. You have to only for to get together, not for no, to remove no, signs. We can signs. do that. But that's the I right. I agree with I agree with Adrian. I thought we actually talked about it. We did, but and I don't know that we came to an agreement. So I'll I back to the video. I don't remember, we never talked about times. it. Uh -uh, I don't, don't necessarily recall it. It could have been the conversation with robust, robust, which I love, but I don't. I think removing signs should have some teeth. Uh, so, 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 so it's not currently in their map. No. It is not. And Pending putting results. something in there sounds fine to me. Yeah. I don't know. Dave, Dave suggested, what did he say? It was $50 Dave, a yeah, day per sign, which is too much. Too much. Um, my only recommend this is my only recommendation would be a per day fine if signage is not removed within the allowed time. Unfortunately, I've had to clean up signs, up several signs after events. That is Dave's email to us. You didn't, you didn't put a price. No. No. And I waited for your feedback, as I always do. So, um, Trent, count me love it. What do you think? How much? Like, is this per day or like just a? He's suggesting a day. He's suggesting a per day per sign. I mean, and this is for which category of signs here? All. Oh, I'm sorry. All um, of the temporary signs. Per day? Five I would be motivated by $25 a day. You know, like per sign out of it. Exactly. Per sign? Yeah, get it per violation, sure. <laughs> I mean, uh, Councilman Parker, Parker, do you think whatever is I, I absolutely am. Yeah. Councilman, Parker. Council President? Yeah. I, 25 I, per day per sign? Per sign or? Per sign. What if we have a. I'm saying, like, if you, had an event that if you had an event, signs. right, you, you got a permit for like 50 signs, and you may have like a $6,000 fine. Like, I'd say per permit, I guess. Yeah. But if you're doing it for the permit holder, correct? Per day, per, per day for the whole batch of signs. Yeah. If you leave, you know, one of them out of 10 out there, you still get the fine. Whether it's 10 you leave or nine out of 10, you, you still, still get the fine. same fine. So yeah. 25 a day yeah. for any amount of signs in your permit. Yeah. Councilman Parker. I, I, no, I don't think that's enough. I think the bottom line is you want to motivate people to take to take them down. That's what our isn't that's what this is all about. To put them in at a certain time and take them down at a certain day. I'm not saying 25 is the number, but I'm just saying that it, you do need to do a per sign type of thing, and it motivates people to take them down. That means that you're taking the sounds you're taking it seriously and not just saying okay I'll do it. I'll ask do one it. real quick question: How many so? What's the cost 18. for what's the cost for the permit? What's the cost for signs? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars, and you got fifteen and signs. Or something? I think it was fifteen signs. $15. So if you have to pay for all, all those signs, yeah. and you is it fair? Is it fair though to be like instead of all that batch has to come down, or every single one has to come down for this specific price? You got ten signs. Rather than it being twenty five bucks for all, ten dollars, ten dollars, ten dollars a sign per day. I don't know. Well, that's hundred and fifty dollars. But my point of it is, they that that if we just put down oh. and you take twenty five dollars, and what is the motivate you saying? Well, okay, well I'll put them down and I take them down, and when it gets to a hundred dollars, I'll take them all down. Or, or, or is it that you need something? You need so when you're doing something like this, you need a call to action, right? And so if you're saying $25 for 10 to 15 signs, it's a call to action. It's not. I'm just telling you, it's not. It's a call to action. It's so like, what's, okay, well, I'll get to it when I get to it. What's the number? I'm just, I'm, I vote on a per person. I'm just, excuse me. Per, per sign. Per sign. Per person. <laughs> um, per sign kind of thing. And I think maybe, like, is it $15? Per sign per day, possibly okay. 15 Councilman Levitt, where are you at this point? I feel like an auctioneer. Councilman Levitt, where are you at this point? Fifteen. You know, if I, if I accidentally leave them up for an extra day, that's a that's a two hundred and twenty five dollar fine. I sound yeah. like. Right, but if you found if you found twelve out of fifteen. Yeah. You're still going to get hit with a three at fifteen each. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So you're you're okay, Council President. 
I don't know. I'm kind of. I'm, I'll come back to you. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, prefer ten dollars per sign per day. Uh, council would they go like that? Yeah, I just I, I per sign per day is a, is there a way that we could um uh, the property maintenance um officer can call them because they have a phone number. Yeah, I mean, like I, I'd like to see some sort of um similar to what he deals we deal with with other right. property maintenance things where it's you know they get they get a courtesy call or you know like I'd like it to be up to him to decide whether the um uh it's it's such a, a no I bad I, situation that he he chooses to enforce the, and I the think state. he would do that you know if somebody complains Which about is what him, he does now I he's agree. in town he's not in town every day so we have to see him then I just I think it's a lot of overreach I mean I don't want to I know that political signs aren't you know aren't in this and it's not related but I'm the one that's gone around and picked them all up in the morning. And, you know, you, you, all of a sudden there's one that you're like, oh, I forgot about that one. And you go like a week later, it's like, how did I miss that? I just, it's, I don't know. What's your number? I, I think you should do it as a lot um, per permit. Like if you, you, you're, you, okay. you get issued a permit. So whatever that fee is. It's per the permit, not the oh, individual so sign. That would, yeah. That's what I'm trying to. Right? Yeah, that's so where I'm. That's where I'm getting a little. I don't like it per sign. What's your number? Councilman Levitt started out at twenty five per day for the entire lot, whatever's left over. Yeah, that's um, your okay. yeah for the whole the whole lot. Right back to you, Council President. It's just more of a. It's, it's just just more of a, a, a symbolic. So that is not what we. I mean, again, what do you? Dave wants teeth. What right, exactly? So the bottom line is, what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to accomplish discipline, and that means that there is an ordinance in place and the respect of the ordinance, or is it that you're trying to be a nice person and saying, "Well, we don't want to overburden." I'm sorry, but if I'm doing the business and I do this and I do this, then it is my obligation to make sure that I follow the rules all the way down the line. And I'm not cherry picking what the rules are going to be. So the bottom line is, is that if you are going to take this seriously, this is what needs to happen. So it, it's, uh, you listen, we're all adults and they're adults. And so it's like telling a kid, well, if you do this, maybe you won't be punished and maybe you will be punished. As opposed to, hey, these are the rules and this is what has to happen. It's the same type of thing. I, I just don't get why... Everybody wants to play the nice guy when it's not appropriate and it's not necessary. Councilman Levin, you were, had you moved your position to a per sign, per day mm -hmm. sign? I mean, if it's a, a I'm very just to, it's reasonable fee, I, I have so no you were, desire to, you know, I, I don't even care about the regulations all that much in the first place. It's, it's <laughs> like, you know, like, so no, I, I, I'm not in particular favor of, of a very large uh, fee or fine for this. 15 or 10 per day? 10 per day per sign seems, sure, that's fine. You know, that those boost it up to, if you leave all your signs out there, 15 apartment, that's a $150 fine. I feel like that is definitely some teeth to it. You yeah, know? I think that if I miss one, fine. it's like, oh, so whoops, okay, an extra 50 so bucks. 10. Councilman Park, 10 per day is you fine. okay with 10 per day? I'll go with 10. Councilman Fasar, you already suggested 10 per day. Back to the council. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I guess my thing on this is yes, that we want our property maintenance guy to be able to do his job and not be burdened by the successive amount of signs. I guess my question is is this, is it so widespread that we have signs everywhere and people are like, oh exactly. my goodness. I believe so. I do. Okay. I no, agree. I think he's right. Yeah, I, think I believe so. Uh, I need yes. a complaint about that. He's he's given, it he recently it. gave a business a he summons who he has been warning for two years. Yeah. It's two true. years. That's always my business. So it's he important. recently gave a business a summons, which hurts my heart, but he's been warning that business for two years who was putting signs everywhere. So, yeah, it's excessive. It is excessive. Yeah. You know, I mean, we have in, a, in our placing ordinance that where signs can be placed, there's teeth in the ordinance regarding, like, Thou shalt not put signs on utility poles, which is a state law, but it's also in our ordinance. 
and you know we got some bad actors. Yeah, we put them on for the we put them on the future legals for the for the bike things. Like, like, we like we're not yeah we didn't follow our own rules. You that's know, my point is like I think people are, are not bound by the yeah but, 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 not bound by but, but that's the point is is <laughs> so, the residents looks looks at us and says we're hypocrites because we're okay. we're you know we're nickel and dining them but then we're not following our own rules. I guess that. Well, who put the bike sign up? But I, I don't want to I don't want to get into that. I just want to say that that has teeth. Because there's there's fines associated with that, mm -hmm. but um, you know Dave Dave does spend an inordinate amount of time chasing mostly businesses, not so much garage sale people, mostly businesses that leave signs up for very long periods of time, uh, just advertising their business or advertising an event. So he just wants teeth because he spends a lot of time, and like I said, he just gave mm -hmm. gave a business a summons because of this. So. Um, I guess there should be a way to build in to discourage it well, I from happening. If, like, if, you, if, if you come in, I'm, I'm an organization that comes in this town and I'm responsible. I come in, I put my signs, I take them up. I don't have to worry about it. They're gone in the prescribed day. I'm a new group coming in. I don't know. I accidentally leave a couple behind. I'm going to say this. If you have the, when, when you the get your permit, the yeah, trade permit will be in there. Yeah. Right. You it's don't take it down for three days or there will be a fine of $15 per day. Yeah. $10. I'm sorry, $10 per day. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine, I'm fine with that as long as it, it I, I don't want Flemington to become like, oh, oh, don't you dare put a sign up. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wait a I don't think Flemington will ever do that. So, you know what? You guys over dramatize stuff. It, it's not going to be that. No, this is the price of doing business. Period. You guys have got to stop this. It's the price of doing business, it's the cost of doing business. Here's what the rules are. Here's what it says in the ordinance. Here's what it says if you don't do it. It's the cost of doing business, whether you're new, old, or indifferent. It's like if I get a driver's license tomorrow morning and I'm speeding, and I say, well, wait a minute, I didn't know that that was speed limit. There's no excuse for it. I'm still going to get a ticket. It's the same thing. You guys have got to stop this. You guys just keep, well, I want to be the nice guy. Well, it's not about being nice or bad or whatever the case may be. It's about following the rules, period. Okay, so we're, I forget now, we were $10 we were passing the metal bag. I'm still saying it's a ten per sign per day. Sign sign per day. Sign. 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 90 days. So wait, I can't remember what was a per day. I said 10 per sign per day, 10 per sign per day, 10 per sign per day. Without council when we were ready here, I don't have to weigh in. I can just moderate this with a smile on my face. So, you okay with this council president? If you guys are cool with it, I'm cool with it. I, Councilwoman Engelhart, one last word? I feel the same way as Councilman um, Wong. Okay. Um, uh, Attorney Corsini, can you please add into this ordinance for its whatever, there will be a $10 per day fine for signs that are not removed um, under their permit. I'm happy. Yes. Is that a substantial yes. change that we need to reintroduce? It is truly a substantial change. Okay. Because I always aim to please, I can make that change now, but you will have to reintroduce it. Can we reintroduce it tonight? Wait, why do we have to reintroduce it? It's, it's, a, it's a substantial change. Yeah, I mean, it was one. That's a whole new clause. I can I know. do it. I was I facetious when I asked that. Yeah, she knew. <laughs> she knew. Um, Undoubtedly. Oh, I, I like yes. that word. <laughs> so I have to. Uh, can we reintroduce tonight? Uh, like I said, I was in plea, so I okay. can do it tonight. Um, but you can do the land use one now, it will not be changed. Okay. Um, I will need to log on to my server through my um, hotspot. So okay. about 15 minutes to do this, but I will do it. Okay, we'll come back. All right, so we have, uh, we'll table that for now. Can I have a motion to table? Oh, a little, little bit. You should, you're going to have to. Well, I have to reintroduce. Yeah, never mind. Gonna, oh. You just, um, okay, so you can table it. You can table it. Leave it on the table. Just table it and reintroduce a new ordinance. Okay, okay. You can table it on the table. Can I? So, so rescind my motion. Can I? Or you can rescind your motion or send second. Send a motion. Okay, can I? I would just table it. Table it. I mean, procedurally, I, I, I don't I don't play games with procedure, but table, that's fine. Table you would it. table it and yeah. just let it right. leave table it on the table. Right, table it definitely. Big have a motion for council president. Long move to. We have a second council member for sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. And then we'll reintroduce as an yeah, right. once Can we keep the same number? Um, or you can use the number. same number, yeah. Because I'm on the table, just and 
the ether. So I have no issue with using well, but if you're more comfortable using a different number, I don't care. I rather if you're if you rather that I, I there's no legal reason you can't. Okay. So okay. Okay. Ordinance 2024-22 and ordinance amending chapter 26 zoning section 2631 signs. Oh wait. This is land use. You can go forward with this, but it's got to go to the planning board. To amend the regulations for temporary signage. This is your land use part. The um, land use part of the sign. There's ordinance. no changes to it. Does right. Not include any fines to change it. Right. The fines are tied back by language I added on the second. It's like a bill of Congress march. <laughs> <laughs> um, Please. Yeah, this is uh, so on the second. It's so much part, nicer than there. I tied it into yeah, the non-land use part. So this path must go to the planning board okay. for the minor amendments. I assume. Those. Okay. But I, the Penalty provision here is contained in the other part of it. Got it. Okay. Can I have a motion to introduce? So moved. Is there a second? Parker second. Any discussion? Roll call. Uh, Councilwoman Engelhart. Yes. Councilwoman Fasar. Yes. Councilman Levick. Yes. Council President Long. Yes. Councilman Parker. Yes. Okay. The motion is carried pending whether or not the planning board gets to this tomorrow night. The public hearing will be. It's going to be tough. But you have an um, extra week. Oh, yeah, yeah, October 15th. I don't know if the planning board has, but you have an extra week. Oh, well, that's as right. Because it's a holiday. It's Tuesday, too. All right, pending. Yeah. We're gonna, we'll set this for October 15th and hope the planning board gets to this. Uh, and you'll try to transmit it tomorrow. Maybe just reach out to Elaine. Uh, I'm going to let her know. Okay, uh, items 12, public hearing. We have ordinance 2024-19 and ordinance amending section 2611 of the code entitled zoning map. Um, can I have a motion to open up the public hearing? Sir. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Public hearing is now open. Any member of the public, uh, if you're online, raise your hand. I don't know why Robin has her hand. Hold the phone. Um, Robin, you had your hand up. Robin, do you want to talk on this ordinance? <laughs> that was from uh, <laughs> that was Okay. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, um, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Can I have a motion to adopt ordinance 2024 19? Is there a second? One second. Uh, any, any discussion among the council members? Did we ever get a copy of the map? Not that it matters. It's in that package. It's in the package. Yeah. I, 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 I put it in the box so that it came out black. So, so is this map with the updates or without the updates? No, this is May 2023. But the next page, it will. It says update. Thank you, Father. Don't don't laugh. No further it's questions. Proposed. It's proposed. It's proposed only. Um, <laughs> Staple there. The second, the second page. Yeah. yeah. Keep going. No more. This one. No. This one. No. Go down. No more. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There it is. Okay. So wait, wait, wait. Two pages. So transition commercial. Can we just explain what that is? Because I don't know. If we ever got so last it. year, last year. The council voted to do the transition commercial, which kind of cleaned up a lot of the uses that were happening down around um, Monument area and um, a few other places. And then it got expanded by the ordinance subcommittee last year um, that would allow for, uh, you know, Beth, unfortunately, Beth, Beth flew off to Spain today. Yes, uh, can you read through the permitted uses? Please, through? that would be All great. Right, that's right. It is the following. It is offices, medical office, child care, indoor and outdoor recreation, theaters, higher education and training, community buildings, club facilities, animal hospital, funeral homes, research facilities, health and fitness facilities, residential uses that have already existed, um, and any combination of one or more permitted conditional accessory uses. And that's pretty much it. All right. Thank the, you. The goal of this, I sat with subcommittee, and the goal of, of this was to clean up 
and combine a lot of the uses that were in the, the there was one zone that was just dedicated to offices. And there was another zone that was, you know, somewhere else that was just dedicated to, to this or that. And so basically what we did was we cleaned up the TC and combined all those things together. We're not that, acreage wise, we're not big enough to have all those individual things. And, and maybe the office um, zone made sense at the time, years ago with the county buildings being in that, it in that area. But um, this was a way to kind of capture and simplify this particular area because it just was too. Um, was it was it, it was more than one thing? Was it more than one thing? In there? It was basically we could, we we took the office and we rolled it into the TC. That's the that's the biggest thing that we did. Um, so that there's a little bit more opportunity. Um, in that 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 area that was just identified as office. Sorry, <laughs> that just identified as office. Um. Um, can can have the opportunity to have other things in it, like theaters and you know, even, I, I think there's whatever, everything that that I was gonna say, expanded lifted. the permitted uses. Um, it, it made it a little less restrictive and a bit more open to interpretation by the zoning officer because right. a lot of our zoning right now still uses old That's codes so that list out exactly what type of business you can and can't have, which is yeah. not a great way and, he, and he's denying a number is. of very specific uses right. because those SIC codes don't exist in our ordinance. And we want him to be able to interpret, like that's what a, that's what a zoning and a, a, an officer is supposed to do, as well as a construction code officer. They're supposed to interpret the ordinance. So but he can't. It allows them yeah. to interpret, meaning, they can say, okay, what did they intend when they wrote this? As opposed to the SIC codes, the CIA, the SIC codes say, you may have this, like, it's like, like it's you're allowed to have an engineer's office, but you're not allowed to have an architect's office. But, you know, if, if an, an officer can go, well, they kind of meant the same thing. Yeah, right. It's almost like that. So this basically got rid of some stuff that, you know, we don't have as many offices as we used to years ago because of the nature of remote working and that, that, um, that uh, right. business softened, so that that industry softened, and that you have as many offices. You know. And there's new businesses that have been created that never existed. Yep. So, like, you can have a medical facility, you can even have an acupuncturist, but you can't have Reiki. Because exactly. Reiki didn't exist in this country. Right, right, right. So, in the SIC so it, code. It, it lets us so You're laughing, either. but that's actually literally happening right now in this town. No, we, we didn't want Reiki. We knew about it, man. We just didn't want it. <laughs> Oh, Come on. <laughs> so that's what you know, and this was unanimously unanimously endorsed yeah. to send here by the by the planning board last year. And it never got done. And it never the <laughs> ordinance never got done. It was uh, we, it just we did our work. Fell so off the radar that, screen that. and sat. So that we did update the zoning itself, but we didn't update the map, right? Yes. yes. We didn't update the exact boundaries yes. where it was. And Beth so, discovered this well, like a couple weeks ago over all this this, you know. Over our new zoning officer doing exactly what he's supposed to be doing, but there's a lot of a lot of people aren't happy in this town because of this whole SIC code thing, and they don't understand it. And you know his predecessor signed off on all kinds of stuff that didn't have SIC codes. So um, so that's where we are. So that's what this does, and it completes the deal. And I you know I did ask Beth to come, and she's like, no, I'll be in state. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's bueno for. So, uh, oh, thanks good? everybody. Yeah, yes. thank you. Um, Councilwoman Lover, thank you for reading that. And Councilwoman Engelhart, thank you for that very good explanation. Um, okay. Anything else on discussion? Can I have a Can I have a roll call, please? Yeah, Councilwoman Engelhart. Yes. Councilwoman Fasara. Yes. Councilman Lovett. Yes. Council President Long. Yes. And Councilman Parker. Yes. Thank you. Ordinance 24-20 bond ordinance amending in part bond ordinance number 2023-34 adopted on December 11th, 2023, providing for the Main Street sewer replacement project and appropriating 1.4 million, therefore, and authorizing issue of 1.4 million bonds and notes to finance a portion of the cost thereof in order to expand the scope of improvements to include the locating, removal, and replacement of galvanized pipes authorized in and by the borough of Flemington in the county of Hunter and New Jersey. I have a motion to open up to the public. Is there a second? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, just to make this clear, uh, uh, 
prior administration secured money for the street part of this project last year after going through uh, with the DPW, their list of priorities. Um, this body uh, added in the sewer lines really makes this project work. And then we recently we realized that we should also add in the galvanized pipes. Um, so uh, our wonderful bond council, Megan Bennett, uh, contacted the iBank for uh, another discussion. And um, they allowed us to reopen this uh, very quickly. Our special projects engineer uh, put in an application and engineered this very quickly. And um, it has been approved. And this will, this money should be, uh, this additional money should be 100% forgiven. Uh, we do have to bond for it, and um, which comes off of our our uh, capital bonding capacity, but we should get 100% forgiveness on that, um, up to $2 million on these galvanized pipes, which are estimated to be between 165, 165,000 and 185,000, depending on how many uh, connections we have on the 35 homes in this section of this project. Um, anybody from the public have hands raised? Yeah, Robin. Robin? I think she's, she's just accidentally left. Robin, is your hands stuck up? She declined to be. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Robin. <laughs> All right, seeing none from the public, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? Oh, move. Is there a second? Mark a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Can I have a motion to adopt? No, I move. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? I just have a question. Sure. Yeah. Sorry. That's so on the spot, this is an annoying question. You can put me on the spot. <laughs> Everybody else does. We all know that this is that wonderful section of nature. We circle, all know. Circle to the, to the traffic light. Circle to the traffic light. We're all aware of it. All the council members know it. The mayor knows it. Our Department of Public Works knows it. So I guess my question is, as far as the time frame, Yes, and I, I should write an article on this, Councilman Parker. Um, I, I should do this. A time frame. So, this project must be completed by June of 2025. Yep. The original bond was taken out in 2020, and you have a five year limit by the IBank to use it or lose it. So, we are under a timetable. So, uh, per our bond council, per our special projects engineer, and per our DPW superintendent, we have plenty of time to get this out there and get it done before June of 2025. They are very confident it'll happen. They're not worried at, basically at all of, on getting it done. Um, so that's the first section. I did sit down with the DPW and reorder their priority list. I will be cleaning that up and sending it out to all of you. And maybe at our next meeting, get um, our, superintendent of public works to come forth and go over the list. There's some changes, not, not a lot of movement, but they have now, now that this one is going to be done, uh, the next big priority for roads is the next section of Main Street, which goes from the traffic light all the way to Corister. I thought it was only going to mine. It goes to Corister. It's the last of the old sewers on Main. And according to Ken Deal, it's where the worst of the sewers are are between um, Maple Avenue and Forrester Place. And um, they're estimating that project to be uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of four to five million. That would also include all the galvanized whatever and the sewer. Now, the good news is uh, I was on another call with the iBank last week with our bond council, uh, our superintendent of public works, our CFO, I think that was it. And oh, and uh and our municipal engineer from Remington Vernick, um, to get everybody on the same page that there are these three indeed these three pots of money, um, one, two under drinking water with a DP and one under mm, trying to think what the, what it's called. It's it's a sewer, it's a sewer fund for sewer lines. Um each of those pot, each of those three funds, uh, at our present present level of economic need in the borough of Flemington, we can borrow up to two million dollars upon completion of the project and certification, get a hundred percent forgiveness, 
And anything over two million, according to our bond council, we would get 80% forgiveness. So we are in very good, like as long as we, we get these projects complete and certified, we could keep, you know, flipping that money to get, you know, because it's when we were having this conversation on updating everything, uh, the bomb guy dropped to me that all the sewer lines on Mine Street are also 100 years old and haven't been done. Now we're doing a section of Mine Street um, soon and the sewer lines aren't going to get done unless we put a stop on that project. Um, so, you know, I have to talk to Remington Burnick about that and my campaign about that and what they want to do. But, um, you know, but that's the good news. We don't have a lot of bond capacity room, you know, because we got to save some for emergencies. But, at, you know, we did last year we, we moved projects and we were able to pay down capital debt by $600,000 and continue to move projects. This year we're in about the same position where we're moving projects. We're still hopefully going to be able to pay down. Bill Hans still on this call? Mm -hmm. Yep. Bill, can you come in as a panelist? Did he decline me? No. Oh, hi, Bill. <laughs> You're on mute. You got to take yourself off of mute. Thank you. Can you hear me? Can now. Hi. <laughs> Hello. I got a check for you, Bill. <laughs> I saw it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't want to speak out of turn since you're on the call. How much How much capital debt, including, you know, even with moving some projects forward this year, are we going to be able to pay down? Um, I think it was like one and a half million or something like that, I think in total. I, what I, have, to, I have to look it up. Okay. So so even though we're continuing with projects, we're still able to open up some additional capacity so that Correct. we can tap into all yeah. this hundred percent forgiveness money and eighty percent forgiveness money. Yeah, um, and that, and like you said, as soon as um you know the project's completed, that debt would go away because they forgive the debt. Right. Yeah, I just wanted I wanted them to hear from you and not yeah. not just me. So <laughs> um any any questions for Bill on this, on the financing part of this? Um and Megan Bennett, our bond council, did say that when all of this um this Main Street project is settled and everything's approved in SAGE and, and all these loans are signed, um, she would like to come in to the governing body and just explain how all of these bonds and uh, the I bank works. Um, because, you know, th this governing body, not this governing body, but this town has long used um, USDA for its financing. And they're lovely, you know, and they give, you know, they give very nice terms, low interest. The problem is there's zero forgiveness. Um, you know, the prior engineer here really liked using them because the paperwork is very simple. IBANKS is not, but IBANK is the way free money and USDA does not. So, you know, I'm an IBANK person. I love the USDA, but the IBANK, you know, is the way to go because they forgive so, you know, a percentage of these, these loans they give. Um, and because we're in a town in economic need, they give, they forgive a huge piece, if not all. So it's the way to do it, even though it, you know, we've got a, our bond council is um, she's very learned in doing the paperwork. So, and Bill knows how to do it, but you know, Megan is there to like walk everybody through anything that they need. Um, so, uh, any questions for Bill? We good, Bill? Thanks for popping on. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, can I have a um. I gotta do a roll call. Oh, that's all I'm at, right? Can I roll call, please? Yep. Yeah. Councilman Engelhart? Yes. Councilman Sorry? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Council President Long? Yes. And Councilman Parker? Yes. Okay. Under regular agenda number 13, resolution 2024 128, resolution mm -hmm. appointing Carrie Rogerson to a full time library assistant children's service at the Flemington Public Library. This has a backing resolution from the Library Commission supporting this uh, position. Can I have a motion? Is there a second? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Councilwoman Fasaro? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Council President Long? Yes. And Councilman Parker? Yes. Uh, resolution 2024 133, resolution appointing Kristen Sky Rainey 
as part time library assistant at the Flemington Public Library. Again, there is a supporting resolution from the Library Commission. We have a motion to approve. Sorry, no. For a second. Perfect. Uh, roll call, please. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Councilwoman Basara? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Council President Long? Yes. And Councilman Park? Yes. The next one, uh, and I should just add that the Library Com Commission chair. You know, has mentioned that this all these part time positions they've had a lot of turnover on part timers, so uh, these are all yeah, they're all back. So that's the word, they're, they're all, all back. So, resolution 2024 134 resolution appointing Lynn Sheard as part time library assistant at the Flemington Public Library. Can I have a motion to approve? I'm sorry, I'm is there a second? Low second. Roll call, please. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Engelhart, yes, Councilwoman Fasara, yes, Councilman Levitt, yes, Council President Long, yes, and Councilman Parker, yes. Resolution 2024-135, resolution appointing Molly Prower as part-time library assistant at the Flemington Public Library. I have a motion, please. Sorry, I'm Is there a second? Perfect second. Roll call, please. Councilwoman Engelhart? Yes. Councilwoman Fasaro? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Council President Long? Yes. And Councilman Parker? Yes. Thank you. Well, we have no work session. Um, Councilman Parker, is there any word from the DPW superintendent about um, ideas on what kind of banner system he wants? No, because the um, he reached out to the CPNL and they don't um, they don't do it, so he's he's working on it. Okay, thank you. Um, he all right, got, he just got the information back from them. Okay, um, we're at public comment session number two. Any member of the public wishing to speak for three minutes? Um, no. put your hand up, Robin. Is this for real or is this for? I don't know. Her staff? and I are having trouble with this. Robin, I may need a panelist. Okay, so unmute. <laughs> Hi, I don't know what the problem is. I I have unintentionally had my hand up in some weird capacity, so apologies. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, we have no bills to pay tonight. That'll be next Fine. We do have an executive session. Um, I also circulated the um, new ordinance. Oh, this ordinance. Send it to Carl. I send it to you. I send it to everyone. All the well, I'm, on, I'm, I'm always on. I'm always on. I know, you're, mode. I know you are. But, um, I did. Can you read? Can you read your change out loud for the public and for the body? I mean, Carl, you have this email, so you don't necessarily have to write it. No, I'm not writing it. Okay. I just so I, I to, to separate the fines the two violations out separately. I added to language of what is now what was a standalone section, but is now it's, uh, paragraph A, um, which just specifies that that penalty is to, for a failure to obtain a license. Then paragraph B states, notwithstanding paragraph A of this subsection, any individual or organization that failed to comply with any provision hereof shall be assessed a penalty of penalty equal to ten dollars per day per sign until the violation is corrected. Thoughts, comments? Yeah, no, I got one last one. So if you put one up without the paragraph, right? does this also apply? Because it looks like it does, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it says it's, it's great, you could have gone to law school. Um, <laughs> it's great, law, great, great, law, a great question of, of interpretation. Right, yes, it does. And I don't agree. I mean, it would apply. So you'd be, if you would get whacked with, you have to get the permit because paragraph A makes you get the permit, right? Makes you pay the PP to get the permit. Mm -hmm. Essentially, make you get the permit. Um, then you get back with the penalty. Do the penalty in the paragraph D. So yeah, the answer is yeah. Sounds fine to me. Okay. All right. And does that have a new number or is it the same number? Square 21. Okay. Uh can I have a motion to introduce ordinance 2421 as amended? No move. Is there a second? Sorry, second. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Engelhart. Yes. Councilwoman Fasara? Yes. Councilman Levitt? Yes. Council President Long? Yes. And Councilman Parker. Yes. Public hearing is set on October 15th. It seems like so far away. Mm -hmm. And I'll be here in 20 leaves falling. Okay. We do have an executive session I um, uh, regarding public safety. There is, I keep number one on here. I have to ask Carla to permanently put that up there so I never forget. It's just a last minute activity. Uh, but we do have one here regarding public safety. Uh, can I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Is there a second? I'll start off. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, let's take a break until 10 after 9. 10 after 9 on this clock. Oh, Not the real 10 after 9, but on this clock.
we give it a all righty we're back he told me he told me weeks and weeks and weeks ago it was going to take like six weeks and more than that we're back okay we're back we're back we're back, we're back. adjourn motion to adjourn long move is there a second and the laird will second all in favor aye, aye. aye. Right. thank you everybody Good.